Kevin is with SAP. He is the head of business development and ecosystem development. So uh, welcome, Kevin. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. When we think about what really excites us about this partnership that SAP and IBM have put together, it really helps with the significant cloud adoption we're seeing in the marketplace. Now, if we look at analyst data as an example, 75% of customers who are gonna make their purchases by 2016 are either gonna be hybrid environments or, or pure cloud. We're hearing from, when we look at IDC research, 70% of the CIOs within our customer base, many of which are in the room today, are gonna make, are gonna have a cloud first strategy. And in over half the scenarios with customer purchases, the LOB decision maker is actually gonna drive it going forward. And so from an SAP perspective, the cloud is much more than just what we often talk about with TCO and agility, but it's really how do we drive more rapidly the innovation to our customers? Our customers are asking for much shorter cycles in order to be able to consume this innovation. And that's why in our cloud journey, we've grown both organically as well as inorganically to deliver 30 plus line of business solutions as well as horizontal solutions to solve our customers' mission critical problems in the cloud. And this chart shows what some of those solutions are. So we have now, we're the number two company in the cloud in terms of users uh, with almost 50 million users in the cloud. Uh, when we look at success factors, our solution for talent, performance management, core HR, we have 27 million users for this solution. Now it's a market leading solution. Our omni-channel commerce, which we really think of as CRM 2.0. When we really think about CRM 1.0 being Salesforce automation, CRM 2.0 is how do we really create that intimacy between our customers and their customers so they can develop a relationship that has a 360 degree view of that customer, regardless of what channel they come in from, whether that is from the web, whether that is from telesales, whether that is from direct sales, call centers, et cetera. And procurement. With our procurement offerings from Ariba, we're able to significantly reduce the friction in terms of the procurement process for direct and indirect materials and the, the friction between buyers and sellers. The Ariba supplier network, we now have 600 billion dollars of transactions flowing through the network. Just to put that in perspective, that's bigger than Alibaba, Amazon, and eBay combined. And on the finance side, we're delivering now through the cloud, real-time finance. So this is the holy grail what CFOs have been looking for for a long time, which is how do I understand where I am throughout the quarter, and how can I do a trial close and understand real-time, on the fly, what my P&L looks like, what does my cash position look like, et cetera, my, my balance sheet overall based on many different simulations as opposed to having to wait to the end of the quarter. So very exciting LOB solutions. And then we've taken at the bottom of the slide, you see all of our traditional solutions like the business suite and HANA where we're delivering that turnkey to our customers as a private cloud offering. So both public and private cloud offerings. And this gives you a view of some of the major customers. We have 260,000 customers overall at SAP, but this gives you a view of some of the customers that are adopting our cloud solutions. Very big companies like Sony, Costco, 3M, just to name a few. And the important thing here is that our customer base is very geographically dispersed across the globe. And that is why this partnership was so critical for SAP and why we selected IBM SoftLayer and CMS platform. Because with our global footprint of customers, around, we have very, very strong demand for data staying in country. More and more of the CIOs are telling us that they want the data to stay in country. They're very concerned about the data sovereignty topic. And what IBM brought to SAP was 40 data centers around the globe, where we can now, in many countries around the globe, del deliver data center and keep the applications within country. Second thing we found very attractive about the IBM offering was the fact that when we look at the security and data privacy, particularly as a European company, the data privacy is a really big issue and IBM was fully compliant with our, our European data privacy requirements. Third topic was scale. 
particularly when we look at phase one of this partnership, which is driving the traditional on-premise AP solutions through the cloud in a private cloud manner, scale is really important. Because when we look at the business suite and HANA, we have customers asking for two, three, four, five, six terabyte instances for a single instance. So tremendous scale. And the, uh, Stephen touched on this earlier, the ability for software to, to deliver both in a bare metal as well as a virtualized environment to very large environments was something also that was critical in our decision to come together in this partnership. And lastly, speed and time to value. With this partnership, we're actually able to deliver uh, in a private cloud environment, SAP landscapes on HANA, and the customer can be up and running in two to four weeks, generally closer to the two weeks, which is incredible in terms of the ability to consume innovations at a rapid pace. So what is the nature of the relationship? When we think about SAP's offering, which we announced a year ago, which is the SAP HANA Enterprise Cloud, private cloud environment for our traditionally on-prem solutions, we're now delivering those through the past year in the cloud. We have 200 customers. And they can do one of two things. You can either buy the infrastructure as a service from SAP and bring your own licenses, or you can get a turnkey offering from SAP, which includes the software as a service and a subscription, as well as the infrastructure as a service and a subscription. What we've done now in the relationship with IBM is the infrastructure as a service is going to be coming direct, going to come from IBM. SAP layers its software as a service. We've integrated our provisioning tools and management tools so that we deliver it as one turnkey bundle to our customers. We take the SLA and we're the single throat to choke. So we have a back to box support agreement with IBM. And again, we've integrated our tools and we've got teams working together to ensure the customer success but you have one phone number to call, which is SAP, and it's an SAP Han Enterprise Cloud powered by IBM. That is essentially what the offering is. And so we're very excited. We think that together between SAP and IBM with this offering, we're able to really de-risk moving mission critical workloads to the cloud um, with our trusted brands and a lot of joint customers, many in the room, we're really excited that we can lower the barriers, de-risk it for you, and allow you to move these mission-critical SAP workloads into the cloud. And this offering is already available. We're starting to work together with pilot customers uh, for the rest of this year, and we plan to do full-scale availability in Q1 starting in January 2015. So that concludes my presentation, and if I can answer any questions, I've got my email address, Kevin. Dietish Barani at sap.com, and uh, I'll also be around here if I can answer any questions uh, after this presentation, and uh, enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you. So I can't tell you how much value I think is being created for our customers with this partnership, right? So, you know, you, 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 you highlighted it, right? Speed and time to market. Data center locations where data privacy matters. And scale getting our customers up and running faster, saving them money, allowing their solutions to be deployed. It. We're looking forward to it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We're looking forward to it as well.